you want your videos to pop, vibrance is a great concept you should know about. In this video, we will have a look at two ways to achieve a vibrant look in Final Cut Pro, plus we will have a look at a plugin that does all of the heavy lifting for you. Firstly, we should understand what vibrance actually is. And if I was a photography or filmmaking influencer, I would say something like, vibrance is a banger machine, it makes your images pop, it increases the saturation in a very subtle and distinct way, whilst not oversaturating anything, it is really, really great. And just like that, 20 seconds went by, I would have produced a fresh bowl of word salad whilst having said effectively nothing. And worst of all, you wouldn't have learned anything. Luckily, I'm no photography or filmmaking influencer, so I can define what vibrancy actually is. Vibrancy is the assimilation of color saturation in a given image. But what does that mean? To answer this question, we need to have a look at the vector scope. A quick recap of the vector scope. The closer something is to the center, the less saturated it is. And the closer something is to the outermost boundary of the vector scope, the more saturated it is. If I increase the saturation, you can see that all the colors move outward. And if I decrease the saturation, you can see how all the colors move inwards. Contrastingly, if I increase the vibrance, you can see that only the innermost colors move outward, whilst the outermost colors, so to speak, the more saturated colors, stay exactly in place. Quintessentially, increasing the vibrance is limiting the variety of saturation in an image. In a nutshell, you can think of it this way. Let zero be zero saturation and 100 the maximum amount of saturation. If the colors in your image are distributed like this, some more saturated colors and some less saturated colors, you don't perceive it as vibrant. However, if their saturation values become similar, you perceive an image as vibrant. Hereby, it doesn't matter what kind of look it is. By our definition of vibrance, it can be a slightly saturated look or a highly saturated look. As long as the color saturation values are similar, your image will be vibrant. Achieving a vibrant look in Final Cut is not very straightforward, but the easiest solution is the built-in vibrancy effect. So let's have a look at that one. If we play around with it, it doesn't look too bad. I can even toggle the skin tone protection if they're shooting off. And yeah, that looks much more natural. However, if you pay attention to the vector scope, you can see that also the outermost colors, so the more saturated colors move. This is not quite what we want to achieve. Additionally, have a look at the background here. If I decrease the vibrance and increase it again, it becomes brighter or I perceive it as brighter. And this is an indication that we're dealing with saturation rather than vibrance in this plugin. Even though it's a quick way to add some punch to your footage, I'm looking for a consistent and reproducible approach. Additionally, I want my approach to be a little bit more objective. The most objective approach would be doing everything myself. So I get rid of the vibrancy plugin and get myself the hue saturation curves. The only curve we need is the saturation versus saturation curve. So I can switch the view to single curves and switch to SVS, which is saturation versus saturation. On the left, you have your lesser saturated colors and on the right, you have your highly saturated colors. So you can change the saturation based on its initial saturation. This is why this curve is called saturation versus saturation. If we think about our definition of vibrance, we can recall that increasing the vibrance is either lowering the saturation of highly saturated areas or increasing the saturation of lesser saturated areas. I will do the latter. Again, less saturated colors are on the left and more saturated colors are on the right. To increase the saturation of less saturated colors, I would need to move this handle upwards. You can see the outermost colors stay mostly in place, so I would have to finesse this curve a little bit. Let's have a look at the before and after. This is before, this is after. The colors stay mostly in place, maybe something like this. Yeah, that's it. This is a typical vibrant look, but as you can see, my skin tones are kind of unnatural, so I want to exclude them. To exclude them, I will get a color mask and sample the skin tones. Then I will change the view to view masks and refine the skin tone selection. Unfortunately, parts with similar colors to her skin tones will be affected as well. In an ideal world, I would set another mask and refine my selection. But as you can see, this approach really requires some time and effort. Once I'm done with my selection and I want to outline that I wouldn't deliver or even consider doing this selection like this, 
there needs to be a lot more done to this selection. But advanced masking in Final Cut would be another video. So we will stick to this selection for this tutorial, okay? Let's pretend I'm okay with this mask. Then I can go to masks and invert masks. I want her skin tone to be black because remember, white reveals black conceals. And the vibrance effect should only be applied to everything that is not her skin tones. Once I'm satisfied, I can disable the masks and have a look at the before and after. This is without the mask and this is with the mask. Much more natural. As mentioned before, this process is rather time consuming and color masks or so-called qualifiers are something you really need to babysit. Especially with 8-bit footage, they might even ruin your video. But what if you want something more sophisticated than the built-in vibrancy effect, but less complicated than this approach? Well. I got you covered. Let's have a look at the Vibrancy plugin. I delete the hue saturation curves and apply the Vibrancy plugin. If I increase the vibrance all the way, you can see that the outermost parts of the colors stay exactly where they were. Additionally, skin tone protection is enabled by default. So I can disable this and you can see that all the colors will be affected equally. I enable the skin tone protection and if enabled, you even have a slider of how much skin tone protection you want. Maybe you want to dial it back a little bit so the skin tones get a little punish as well. Additionally, you have a global impact slider to get where you want to get fast. 